Hi, I'm Jeff Weiser, and this is MusicMoose.org, and we're going to get started on the violin lessons here today, and I'm going to show you the basics of certain things like uh, uh, tuning. Um, first, I'm going to show you how to hold the fiddle. Uh, you want to hold it under your chin and support it with your shoulder and your chin, and you should have free movement of your left hand, and you should be like a, ejecting a shotgun shell, I always say. it's like. You get, should be able to slide your hand up the neck and hit the heel of your hand against the side of the fiddle for shifting in different positions. Um, and you should try to hold your fiddle stable and don't let it go down. Always hold your fiddle up so you can see it good and, and hold it stable so your fingers aren't wandering. Once you learn to put them in the right place, that's where they should go every time. And now uh, I'm going to talk about bowing. Um, the tension on the bow. Uh, a few things about the bow. Uh, you should always make sure that if the, bow, if the bow seems to be slippery and it slides around a little bit on you, then it needs rosin. You don't want to put too much rosin on because you don't want it caked all over your finish on your violin. And it's always good to wipe rosin off your violin to keep your violin looking nice and it safe, preserves the finish. The rosin kind of works on a finish and it's not good for the instrument. But on the, on the bow, when the hair gets a little dark V shape down here by the frog. This is called the frog where you hold the bow. Uh, when it starts to turn dark there, that's a sign that it's needing to be rehaired. Or if you start breaking a lot of hairs, it should be rehaired because then you get an imbalance of hair. Uh, some people like to have a lot of hair in their bow. Some people don't like that much. I like to have a nice flat ribbon. A nice flat ribbon of hair is what I like. And um, to hold the bow, I usually try to hold it uh, pretty much like a classical player does. You let your fingers sort of, you, your pinky goes on the tip of the bow, and your index finger is what puts the pressure on, and your little pinky brings the pressure off. And the other two fingers, little two fingers sort of just saw fall over the frog, and your thumb goes inside here. Now sometimes my thumb is straight, sometimes it's curved, depends on what I'm playing. And I, I, t I have a tendency to tip my bow away from me just a little bit when I'm playing. Um, tension on the bow. You want enough tension on the bow so that the, the stick does not bottom out on the hair. If the stick starts to bottom out on the hair, you need to tighten your bow a little bit. Now, you can get your bow too tight. If your bow is too tight and you start to play something slow, your bow, it'll wobble. It'll, it'll wobble with you. So you might have to loosen it up just a little bit, but you just don't want the hair to touch on the stick on the string and wear the finish off the inside of your bow. So the bow should be just tight enough so that don't happen. And then you want to start drawing your bow, tip it a little bit away from you, about an inch from the frog, start on like maybe the A string here, and you want to draw it as slow as you can and get a tone. like. Now in the middle there, my bow started to wobble a little bit, so I might want to tighten it up just a hair, or loosen it up just a hair. I mean, then that might be better, yeah. That's better. Same thing you would uh, B. And then drop to about maybe you know, half an inch from the tip of the bow. You don't want to go off the string with the bow. And practice going the other way, too. Um, what I used to do is try to practice it. Once I got the feel of how where my hand should be, I tried to shut my eyes and, and make sure I didn't run out of bow. That's a good thing to do. Um, practice your down and up bows. Um, I want to talk a bit about uh, chin rests. Um, a lot of violins have chin rests that, I'll show you my chin rest that don't go over the tailpiece. It's good to have one that goes over the tailpiece because it clamps on both sides. There's an end block in your fiddle and that'll clamp on each side of the end block. That's good. One that clamps over here could cave in the sides eventually. It's not good for the fiddle. So try to always get a tailpiece that goes over the chin rest like this. Uh, you always should have a fine tuning E. I don't use fine tuners on every string because the distance from the bridge to the fingerboard should be the same to where your string hooks in. That gives the proper length of the string. So you get the proper tension on the top of the instrument and get the right amount of volume. 
the tone out of the instrument. So that's important how it's set up. Thank you and goodbye.